All right, we're back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our uh, third segment. And our third segment is going to be uh, like the last one, which was um, AL Team's Most Impactful Edition this offseason. We're going to now be doing NL Team's Most, NL team's most Impactful Edition and uh, what's going to go on with that. So, um, yeah, I think let's, let's, get, uh, let's get straight into it. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think starting off with the uh, Mets is uh, appropriate. So this is going to be kind of an interesting one. I'm curious to see what people think about it. Um, and that is Adrian Hauser as the Mets' most impactful addition. Now, the Mets did not add many big names. They added guys like Harrison Bader, Sean Manaya, Luis Severino, uh, Shintaro Fujinami, guys like that who were good players, but kind of just around the edges helped the depth of the overall team. And Hauser definitely is part of that as well. But I think when you just look at most impactful for the team, I definitely think it is going to be Adrian Hauser. Um, I th- he, Adrian Hauser is definitely the worst of the pitchers I mentioned. They got... You know, even with uh, Senga being out, he's still probably the uh, five starter in that rotation. But I think he brings an element to the Mets that no other pitcher in the rotation can, which is just stability. I mean, this is a guy that consistently throws innings, maybe not the best ERA, but still a respectable one that gets the job done, that eats innings at a uh, good amount. And I think that's something the Mets really need. You know, Manaya, Senga, we already saw it, Severino, Quintana, they all have injury risks, and they all have risks of their own, and I don't really think Hauser does. I just think he's a good, stable number five, and I think when looking at impact of this year, I think Hauser is going to be the most impactful simply for the fact that he is going to throw consistent innings, most likely, and just be um, a consistent force in that Mets rotation. Now, of course, as I say this, he'll probably get hurt because of what's going to happen with that. But I'm still uh, I'm still hopeful for Hauser and what he can bring to the Mets. Uh, the Braves. The Braves did not add much this offseason simply because they don't really need it. They have an amazing team already. Um, and But the, one of the big players they did add, I'd probably say their most impactful addition, is Chris Sale. Um, yeah, he, 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 the Braves need another starter. I don't know if just adding Reynaldo Lopez to be a starter as uh, um, after he was relieved for most of his career, is that you bring Chris Sale, if he stays healthy, he can be the most impactful um, addition on that Braves roster that has needed some depth the past few seasons, not only in the regular season, but in the playoffs. I mean, we've seen what happened with the playoffs, in the playoffs with the Braves the past few years, just how much you know it's kind of failed them. And it's a big reason why they haven't, made it back to the NLCS after winning the World Series in 2021. So, uh, yeah, I definitely think Chris Sale is someone to watch. Uh, Phillies, they didn't really add many people. I'm not counting Aaron Nola because they didn't add him. He was a re-signing. So I'd probably say it's Whit Merrifield because they didn't add many people. He brings a nice, he brings a nice uh, element to the bench for the Phillies. Um, nice depth there, but that's kind of it. Um, nothing really else. Um, so I don't know what else to... Uh, to say about Merrifield here, but that's it. You know, I mean, yeah, he's not, yeah, he's he's kind of it. Phillies haven't done much in adding people, so we'll see what happens with that, and we'll see how uh, Merrifield performs with uh, Phillies. Uh, the Nationals, again, a team that hasn't added much, but why would they? The Nationals are not very good at baseball. Um, I think Nationals fans would be the first ones to tell you that. Um, definitely the biggest addition, though, is Joey Gallo. Um, I like the uh, process of the move they're doing here, signing a guy who used to be really good, um, giving him a starting role, seeing if he can uh, get his form back, um, become the player he once used to be. Um, you know, Gallo is really good. He, well, he was really good, sorry. But maybe the Nationals see something in him that they can bring back the Joey Gallo of Texas in him. Um, so yeah, and if he's good, you can either build around him and make him a core part of your, make him a big part of your core. Or you can trade him at the deadline for a nice prospect. Um, we'll see. Uh, so yeah, I like the addition of Joey Gallo to the Nationals and uh, what it brings to them. And finally, ending it off in the NL East with uh, the Marlins and a guy they just added yesterday, which was their only major league signing, and that is Tim Anderson. Um, yeah, not much to say here. I talked about it a lot last episode um, when it broke. So uh, yeah, if you want to check out that. Um, Check it out. It'll be uh, it'll be up there, and I'll, uh, I'll probably put it at the end of the video of this clip on YouTube if you want to check out my thoughts on uh, Tim Anderson and uh, other signings. Uh, so yeah, um, he brings he brings a nice shortstop to the Marlins 
nice, consistent, everyday guy um, in a low-pressure environment so that he can kind of get his career back on track in a place that there aren't as much uh, expectations and uh, things like that for him to uh, quietly try to rebound after his horrible season last year with the White Sox. So uh, not really anything else for the Marlins because they haven't done much. So, But uh, for the things they have, I did like the uh, Tim Anderson signing. And I thought he, I think he's definitely going to be impactful for the uh, season for them. Uh, moving on to the NL Central here, we have uh, for the Cubs, Shoto and Managa. Uh, they didn't really add much to the Cubs. They added Michael Bush on a trade. Uh, Nick Drenaris, uh for agent signing. Craig Council is a manager, but I'm not really counting him. Uh, Imanaga has some question marks, of course. He had some stuff with his physical go down, and uh, there are some question marks from Japan, like his home run problem. But I still think he's going to be impactful. I still think he is a good player um, overall, and I think he's going to be uh, a nice addition to Chicago and bring a nice element to that pitching staff there. You know, they're losing some guys like Marcus Stroman, who went to the Yankees, of course, so I think Imanaga should fit in well there. And, uh, yeah, brings a nice pitcher to uh, the uh, north side. Uh, the Reds. I talked about this guy a few times now on the show, and I, I talked about it today as well with uh, Kenneth for his show, uh, two segments about baseball. Me and him talked about that. Um, so if you want to watch that, go ahead. Um, it's on the channel. Um uh, Frankie Montas and the Reds, I love this signing so much. I think it was a great move by the Reds to sign him, a guy that I thought was going under the radar in the market. Brings another element to that pitching staff that I think could be really good. I mean, they have five legit starters, in my opinion. Hunter Green, Nick Lodolo, legit. Frankie Montas, in my opinion, is going to be really good. I think Graham Ashcraft is really good. I think Nick Martinez was a smart signing by them to uh, stretch him out and make him a starter. So, uh, yeah, I definitely like the signing for Frankie Montas to the Reds, and I think it made a lot of sense and is uh, really good for them. So, yeah. Uh, the Brewers. Uh, adding Reese Hoskins is definitely their most impactful addition. They didn't really do much except for trade Mark Canna and Corbin Burns. You know, I mean, and re-sign Wade Miley. Woohoo, I guess, if you're a Brewers fan. But, you know, the Brewers have been needing offense for a long time, and finally getting a middle-of-the-order bat like Reese Hoskins helps with that. Obviously, he was out for the entirety of last year, but I don't think that really matters when going over a first-base DH type. Um, I think he brings a lot to that lineup that you you know, you know didn't have in the past few years. So I'm really excited to watch him in Milwaukee and how he uh, gets back from his rehab and if he can be uh, the Reese Hoskins of uh, before in his career. Finally, we have the Pirates. This one might be an interesting choice to a lot of people, but to me, it makes a lot of sense and it's definitely the most impactful addition. Uh, maybe not their best player, but definitely most impactful, in my opinion. Um, and that is Yasmani Grandal. Now, Yasmani Grandal is definitely past his prime. He's not a starter in this league anymore. But I think he brings an element... Sorry about that. I think he brings an element to this pirate team that they didn't have before, which is a veteran catcher and a veteran leader. Now, obviously, you have veteran leaders. You have guys like Andrew McCutcheon, who are definitely going to be veteran leaders, but... Grandall, I think, specifically helps one entity of the team, and that is Henry Davis. Henry Davis was your first overall pick who you picked to be a catcher. Um, there are some question marks about his glove going forward, but I'm not um, I'm not a big deterrent on that. I still think he uh, can be a really good uh, catcher in this league. And I think adding him Grandall, you know, adding a veteran in the catching space can help him be that, can help him work with that, and help him with his defense um, at catching and uh, how he's going to perform. And I, th I love the Grandall signing. Um, again, I think it's a nice, a, adding a nice veteran back up to Henry Davis after the unfortunate Andy Rodriguez injury. It was a great move for this young team and a great move by Ben Sherrington. So, um, yeah, I thought it was a great move for the Pirates, and I definitely think he's going to be the most impactful, maybe not hitting-wise, but uh, I definitely think he is going to be a really good player. And... Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to uh, to watch him with uh, with the Pirates. So, yeah. Uh, we're going to go on to the NL West here, and we're going to start with who else but the Dodgers. I'm not going to spend much time on this. It's Shohei Otani. Um, yeah, it's Otani. When you have the best player in baseball, that's what the answer is going to be. Yes, he's not pitching this year, but he's still one of the best hitters in baseball, maybe even the best, and he still is the best player in baseball. Maybe not for this upcoming year because he's not going to be pitching. But as soon as he pitches one inning, to me, he'll be the best pitcher in baseball again. Um, 
yeah, pretty easy here. It's Joe Atani. He's the best player in baseball. Dodgers added him. Can't can't get more impactful than that. Uh, the Diamondbacks, Eduardo Rodriguez. This is another signing I've talked about on the sh- on the uh, show a good amount. How much I love it. Um, I thought it was a great move by the Diamondbacks to bring in a guy like Eduardo Rodriguez to uh, solidify that rotation a little bit more. Um, yeah, I think he's going to be really good with them. He had a good season with the Tigers, bouncing back after a rough first season where he dealt with some personal issues as well. So, yeah, I think a top three of Zach Gallen, Merrill Kelly, and Eduardo Rodriguez. That's just that's that can play with anyone in this league, man. Um, bringing in even guys like Brandon Fott, who can be the number four guy. Uh, I'm really a big fan of this Eduardo Rodriguez signing. Also, the future as well. Um, Merrill Kelly's getting older, so you can just when he does eventually leave the team or maybe even retires, you can slot in Eduardo Rodriguez as the number two guy, and uh, it's kind of a seamless transition. So, yeah, I'm a huge fan of this Eduardo Rodriguez signing for the Diamondbacks, and I'm just a fan of what it brings as an element to the team. Uh, the Padres, it's Michael King, um, pretty easily. Um, he was a big part. He was the main part of the Juan Soto trade for a reason. He's a really good pitcher. Um, I'm really I'm really high on him as a starting pitcher with the Padres. Um, I think they are as well. The Yankees made him a starting pitcher for a reason. They thought they could get something out of him, and uh, by doing that, they got Juan Soto. So yeah, I think it's a, a nice little uh, butterfly effect to watch if you're the uh, if you're a Padres or Yankees fan. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to what Michael King can do with the uh, Padres rotation, with that staff, and see what he brings to them, and see if he can uh, replicate what he did last season in the second half with with the Yankees and bring it to the Padres and that rotation that desperately needs it after losing Blake Snell or what we presume we assume will be losing Blake Snell because Blake Snell because obviously he has not uh, left the team yet because he has not signed with anyone. So uh, yeah, uh, the Giants to me it's Jorge Soler. Um, I mean, yeah, he, adding a middle of a bat, like middle of a line of bat like this is extremely impactful, especially for the Giants, a team that needed a big righty, righty power bat. Jung Hu Lee was probably the bigger signing with a six-year deal, but I like Soler a little bit more just because of how much power he does bring to that lineup. Um, he brings another, you know, just how good he is at hitting and crushing baseballs, and I really like the signing for the Giants, too. Get that middle of the order settled, settled in, and bringing in a guy like Soler definitely fixes that and definitely helps that. And I'm very excited for uh, Giants fans to uh, get to watch Jorge Soler. Really wanted him on the Mets, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited to uh, to watch him in the Bay and see if he can hit any balls into McCovey Cove, even as a righty. Uh, the Rockies finally, Kyle, Quant- Kyle Quantrill, I guess. Again, the Rockies haven't done much because of the Rockies. Um, nice little pickup from the uh, Guardians who. Let him go after uh, some not great seasons, after a nice start to his career. So, uh, yeah, um, look at, seeing if the Rock, we'll look forward to see if the Rockies can find a, a nice young pitcher in Colorado with Cal Quantrill. I doubt it because it's Coors Field. Pe- people usually don't play very well in Coors Field if you're a pitcher because of the altitude and all that. We know this already, though. So uh, it's really the only addition the Rockies made that was notable, so not much to uh, say about this. So, uh, yeah, that's our third segment here. Um, you know, uh, we talked about uh, NL teams and what their most impactful additions were. Uh, I'm going to go to a break, but first we're going to talk about uh, what's going on in the uh, spring training games. And from last I checked, nothing has really happened. So uh, nothing to uh, mention here. So, yeah, we're going to go to break. And then after that, we're going to be talking about our third and final segment, which is going to be... I mean, a fourth and final segment, sorry. News around the league, and uh, yeah, just what's going on with that. Uh, Some general news stories around the league. And uh, so, yeah, we'll talk about that after uh, break. So, I'll see you then. Thanks. 